Thank you so much, everyone, for staying with us. It may not be the best of times in the country, considering the security situation and a host of other critical national issues. Our former vice president uh, yesterday says that Nigeria is in trouble over what it describes as a rising debt profile. Last week, Nobel laureate Wolesho Inka said he does not believe the government of the day has the capacity to tackle the nation's problems. In all of these critiques and issues, all appears tensed across the land. For President Muhammad Buhari believes it will, it will be well for Nigeria. President Muhammad Buhari says he remains committed uh, to a save Nigeria and that he will deliver on all promises made to Nigerians. The president reiterates his vision for change, which he says includes having a safe and secure nation, a vibrant and inclusive economy that would provide jobs as well as a system free of corruption. The president further explains that his administration is concerned about families and children living safer lives with opportunities to earn a living. Our vision for change is to have a safe and secure country for our citizens, a vibrant and inclusive economy that provides jobs and livelihood for our young and energetic population. And of course, a governance system that is free of corruption, a system where any Nigerian has the same opportunity as the next one. This is what we campaigned on in 2015. So, there's a lot on President Buhari's plate. Not a very good time for the nation. So, he has his job cut out for him. There's so much under him right now as he's uh, taking charge of the country. It's been 51 days since he was sworn in. The issues of job creation, which the party promises, fixing the economy, cabinet formation. There's a lot of pressure, as he has said. Uh, a lot of issues about the Naira, how it performs, the exchange rate, a lot of issues. The tribunal is also there challenging his victory and the polls. Issues of security, banditry, kidnapping, those are on his neck. Politics is another dynamics. You know how much that troubled him in the first term. He doesn't want a replay of that to happen. Infrastructure development is one of the major things he also promised. How is he going to deliver on all of his promises the burden of delivery for this man? A lot of work for him. And the question is that, Professor Wolesha Inka says, can he deliver? He did say he doesn't believe that this government can deliver, has the capacity to, uh, to do all of those things that uh, the nation is facing right now. So there are a lot of issues. My panel tonight are seated in our Abuja studio, Senator Shehu Sani, a former lawmaker from Kaduna State, and Mr. Daniel Buala, uh, a lawyer and a member of the APC. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for coming on today. And let uh, the conversation begin, everyone. We begin. Uh, let me begin with you, Senator Shehu Sani. Yesterday is the issue of uh, the debt profile, and uh, the former president, of, uh, uh, Jonathan, is also advising on the issue of security. Today we are hearing the president is saying that, look, everything is under control. Do you think so? Well, um, well first of all, on the issue of debt, the Nigeria's public, overall public debt profile has been published by the DMO for now stands at over 24 a trillion naira, and the external debt instrument stands at over $25 billion. Now, uh, this includes instruments from the World Bank, uh, Islamic Development Bank, and then uh, Chinese loans and all those things. And uh, there is the possibility that there will be more borrowing before the end of the year for other infrastructures. So um, experts will say we are within the safe debt limit, but what is very clear is that we are moving away from that safety to a point of concern. That's on debt. On security, uh, well, you can see what has been going on, and it has not been different from what we have had uh, in the last four years. Uh, there has been some progress made, but uh, those progress uh, has not actually and seriously 
uh, combat the problems of this bloodshed and violence that we have been having. In the northwest, uh, where I come from, uh, banditry is still on the rise, from Kazana to Zamfara to parts of Niger State and Karuna State. Uh, villages and towns isolated are unsafe, and people are still very apprehensive. Uh, though there have been some effort made, especially in Zamfara State, with the talks with the bandits and other things, but uh, things have not actually changed. And on, in the Northeast, I believe that uh, the next uh, guest will be able to speak better. But from the reports which you have had over the killings uh, still going on, and even the personnel from the army uh, were also uh, affected of recent, you can still see that the president has two major challenges before him, the economy and the security. And security is so important. Uh, with what has happened with the killing of First Ranti's daughter, it's clearly that the southwestern part of the country also is within the axis uh, that could be said to be insecure. So the president has a lot to do, and uh, uh, the, the earlier he does the, it, the, the better. Now, sorry, sorry about my body. The... Wait for plans, meetings, briefings, those that have not been producing any result. The doubt, and I wanted to answer quickly, sir, uh, the doubt about the capacity of this government for coming from someone like Professor Wale Inka, and uh, the, what is on the ground that you have mentioned, the issue of security, do you think things are out of control presently? Uh, well, I still believe that um, uh, these are things that can still be tackled because uh, we are not uh, uh, insulated from the problem as a nation. Our neighbors to Niger, Chad, and Cameroon Republic, they are also facing the same problems. And other nations within the continent, uh, parts of uh, Libya and Somalia are all part of it. So I believe that um, they can still achieve if they are determined to do that. But of concern is the fact that uh, the efforts that have been deployed for now has not been able to produce any serious result. The insurgency has lasted for one decade now, and the banditry in the Northwest is now closing to five years, and the earlier something is done, the better before the whole of the country has been engulfed. Let me allow Mr. Buala to come in here. Looking at enormity of the, uh, the functions and what the president has on his hands, for example, all of it, and when you hear uh, the PDP, for example, saying, declare a state of emergency, what do you think is going on right now? Is your party still in control or in charge of things? Thank you for having me. Well, I believe that uh, our party is in control and is capable of handling it. But it's not just about the party because fighting insecurity the world over is a concern of every citizen. And in every society where insecurity problem is handled, two things are fundamental in the fight. One is the use of human intelligence. The society, the people, the community should be able to provide intelligence to the intelligence agencies. That will become the foundation, the bedrock on which policymakers will take decisions. Secondly, is the use of technology such as drones. And if you see the case of banditry and even insurgency in the Northeast where the Boko Haram strike from the bush, you discover two things. Number one, May, may not be unconnected with our border, but most of the time it is because our patrol system is not sufficient in dealing with this kind of situation. So the use, investment in the use of drones will be very pivotal in the fight. As per what uh, Professor Wally Sorenka said, he's not a security expert. Therefore, his conclusion that the president is incapable of handling the governors is neither here nor there. It is just like, like the later of President Obasanjo the only reason the letter is given credence is because a personality like him said it, but not because the content is strange to us. So it's not even a Nostradamus to it or um, uh, Christopher Columbus. It is a collective responsibility of every citizen because it is now clear that insecurity is not the problem of the poor man. Insecurity is also the problem of the rich man. When we look at the death, uh, the unfortunate death of the daughter pause of our Pastor let me pause it, it for a moment. It, it baffled our mind. Sorry, but so Bola, also is the death of Alex Badi right here in FCT. Just wait, let me pause you for a moment. I'll allow you to conclude that thought, but we need to take a break. A lot of issues on our hands tonight, everyone. 
and the thinking of many Nigerians, wherever you may be watching, is whether or not we are in safe hands. The president says, all is well. We'll find out more. we we'll dissect the issues, security, economy, and a host of other issues on the mind of this man, the number one citizen of Nigeria. We'll talk more when we return from this break. Everyone. Join us.